there was abuse. <sighs> I'm just wondering if he's getting abuse and criticism confused, because all I see on forums is people with opinions. Some of them have got vastly different opinions to each other. And we are allowed to disagree. That's the whole nature of people having freedom of expression. Uh, we are allowed to disagree with each other, sometimes very quite strongly. And what Ike doesn't seem to get is that he seems to become very insulted and defensive the moment he's criticised or challenged on the uh, material that he says. So what he calls abuse, other people may call criticism. What on earth are they doing? Exercising their thoughts, perhaps? <laughs> see, see, this guy, he comes across as not the early David Icke from the early 1990s, all big about freedom and people can express what they like. He sounds like he wants to censor. You only have to take a look at his own official forum to see. Well, me, I personally didn't last there. I'd lasted there for less than 24 hours because I brought up some, uh, I brought up a, an innocent question about the Richard, the Richard Warman legal case, which occurred about six or seven years ago. And um, the very next day, my username, my entire account was that it was deleted. No, no message from the administration there to give reasons why I was gone or anything like that. He only has to look to his own message forum to see the massive amount of censorship that's going on internally there. The David Icke worshippers and followers are allowed onto his message board, but the people who are not so much into him have, have got some disagreements with some of his material, the kind of people that would challenge him. Gone. Banned. Um, either temporary, permanent, messages deleted, etc. What are they doing? They've got caught in the little game. You know what the little game's about? Me, me, me. It's not about communicating information to uh, uh, spread and expand the number of people are, who are in awareness of what's going on in the world and what's coming unless we wake up and take uh, action to stop it. It's not about that. Maybe it never was for some of them, but it's certainly not now. It's about them. Uh, and, you know, you, you get these um, conspiracy snobs, I guess, is, is a description for them, where instead of communicating the information and uh, being, um, the word's not, not, not grateful, but being um, supportive, that's the word, supportive of, of others that are getting this information out. Hey, that's fantastic what you've done. You were on that program. You were on that program. That, that's brilliant. More and more people know about it. Well done, mate. All the best. I'm going to try to do this now, and I'm going to try to do that. That's what um, happens when you, you are, a, a, if you like, a big game uh, player, where your focus is expanding knowledge to as many people as possible, through as many mediums as possible. But what you get instead with the little game players within conspiracy research is when someone's starting to have success in communicating knowledge uh, and information that, that wouldn't normally get out to a wider audience, instead of saying, great, hey, we're making progress because this is all, all, we're all in this together, what you get is jealousy. And, and, and it's a kind of amazing uh, what people say about me. He's got to be uh, uh, on the inside because, look, he's on this program and he's on that program and he's on that program. And what? You know why I'm on that program? And that program because I've spent 20 years of my life making the sacrifices on many, many levels and not taking no for an answer, putting one foot in front of the other when the abuse... Uh, I've reached monumental proportions when I couldn't 
walk down any street in Britain without being laughed at by... This guy appeared on BBC television, the famous Wogan interview, in a turquoise tracksuit. Claimed he was the son of the Godhead. Towards the end of the programme, he made all sorts of predictions about uh, big earthquakes are coming at the end of the year. There's going to be big volcanic eruptions, and those people, those people over there in the audience, won't won't be laughing so much when, uh, like, effectively, the end of the world has arrived. And um, and of course, these earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and so on and so forth, did not materialise. So when he appears on a national radio programme and starts coming out with goofy stuff, when he had previously been a very reputable sports presenter on Grandstand, uh, presenting the sport on Saturday afternoons on national television, people are going to go, Way, what's happened to him then? And uh, everyone knows the way that the media works in a country like the UK. Some people are going to take the piss out of him. So some people had a bit of a laugh. Some people took the piss out of him. Monumental abuse. Person after person and family after family, where a, 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 a comedian only had to say my name on television and he got a laugh. No judgment. <laughs> I think he's taking it a bit too... He's too sensitive. He's taking it too personal. Just the name. But I kept going, I kept going. Why? Because I believed in what I was doing. And as a result of that, um, uh, I'm now starting to have the opportunity to get information out to um, a, a wider public. Nothing like what I'd like and nothing like what is necessary. But we're, we're starting to make um, inroads into the, into the mainstream. That's why it is. Uh, but the little game players, who, who it's about me, 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 me. Oh, I'm a better researcher than you. Oh, I'm the one that knows about that. You don't know about all this stuff. Alex Jones? It's pathetic. It's pathetic. And unless we um, start to focus on the big game, which is the unfolding Orwellian state that is no longer a totalitarian tiptoe, it's a totalitarian sprint. Then, while the abusers go on and on and on, trying to undermine those who are having some success in getting this information out, eventually, there'll be a knock on their door. And... That'll be the end of it. Ooh. But if we're entering a totalitarian state, won't they kick the door off of its hinges? Not polite, you know. Um, can I come in and um, arrest you, please? Because we are the thought police or something along those lines. Uh, here we've got a guy who still has a platform to speak. He can, go, he can go on national radio stations. He's on numerous internet radio uh, stations that broadcast worldwide. Um, he usually gets an easy ride uh, when he appears on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. And these types of people... It's, uh, I don't want to say too, anything too strong against George Norrie at this point. It's his interviewing style. He's, a, he's got a very genteel interviewing style and a lot of respect is shown towards the um, person that he's interviewing. But the trouble with gentle interviewers like that is whatever happened to playing devil's advocate? What happened to these people being challenged with what they're saying rather than having these radio presenters sounding like... Well, they mean it most of the time. They sound like they mean it most of the time. Agreeing with every damn point that's being made, even the goofy-sounding stuff. Um, but my point is, he's got a platform to speak nationally, internationally. He's invited onto radio stations. And yet he tries to give the impression that we're already in this Orwellian state. Big Brother style. But if we really were in that right now his platform to speak would be gone. He, he could forget having a website on the internet. His radio appearances, they wouldn't happen. 